From Liverpool growing up, I never would have dreamt that I'd be in a position to help and support the club and guide us through what I think is going to be an incredibly exciting uh, couple of years to come. But I think about my upbringing and I think about my love for this club and my basically my experience in business and being able to bring that together to help this club, unbelievable. When the opportunity arose, what did go through your mind? My dad went through my mind. Um, my dad um, imbued Liverpool Football Club into me. We, we first walked into Anfield uh, holding my hand in 1959, Liverpool 4, Lake Norian 3. I've bled red, I can still feel and smell and experience that that day. You feel like you're, you're going to meet your dad again and he's going to say, so how did it all end up? And I said, I ended up as the CEO of our club dad. And that was the first thing that went through my mind. My entire family are red. There isn't any blue infiltration whatsoever that I've been able to detect. Uh, everybody was absolutely delighted. I still have a lot of family over here. My grown children uh, are in America and, and they couldn't have been more happy for their dad. They know exactly what this means to me and uh, they, they couldn't have been more proud, I think. Um, and uh, a lot of work to be done, but yeah, everybody's, uh, everybody's on my side so far. <laughs> Tell me about your experiences of supporting Liverpool from afar. I left uh, the UK permanently in 1981. And when I first moved to America, it was not easy uh, to f even figure out the scores, never mind watch a game. And uh, the newspapers didn't carry football scores. And so on a Sunday, no matter where I was in the world, I would call my dad and my dad would talk me through the score, the scorers, what the other teams had done. As it's evolved, uh, football, soccer has become so much more popular uh, in the United States. And every game on every platform is live. And I feel very, very fortunate for that. Is this unlike any position you've held before? Because there is that emotional connection. It is. And the emotional connection of, of, of this is not only a passion I have for, for the business of football, but this is my club. The great companies I've worked with before, I have a passion. I have a passion for the product, for the brand, for the people. But, but when you add the passion for your club, this is where I was born. Yeah, this is very, very special. And the, the weight of what I will be doing on the expectations of hundreds of millions of people like me as devout Reds, it's huge for me, yes. For those who may be unfamiliar with your experience, tell us why this is a good fit, not just for you, but for the football club. Well, I think I like to think I bring the passion we just spoke about, but also a tremendous breadth of business experience. I uh, left for America in the early 80s, uh, worked for 11 years for a brand many people remember, Patrick and Kevin Keegan wore Patrick and Michelle Pratini wore Patrick. I was, ended up, started off as a young sales guy in Southern California, became president, got spotted by Reebok and became head of sports marketing for Reebok uh, and actually came here to Anfield in July of 1995 and did the Reebok deal with the then CEO, Peter Robinson, who sat next to me. And I like to think it took me 22 years to get one chair to the right to be in his position. But that was my first real business interaction with the club. Left Reebok and had a complete change of career and went to be the president of Sega uh, and launched the 